Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, today I am with you to do my June wrap up. And in June I read three books of varying sizes. That's quite good for me. I'm not, I'm a fast reader, but I don't read an awful lot of books a month. Let's get cracking with my June wrap up. And the first book I read in June, I'm only a little embarrassed of. It's The Little Shop of Happily Ever After by Jenny Colgan. I did not like this book. I did not like this book at all. I've read a few Jenny Colgans. I've read more than I should probably admit to, actually. For those who don't know who she is, she's a uh, contemporary romance author. Uh, she's been about for about 15, 16 years now. I think I first read her when I was about 13, so that was 15 years ago. Um, and I read Talking to Addison first and then I've sort of picked up a few. I've not read all of hers but I've read a fair few over the years and generally I've quite enjoyed them. And this one sort of sounded like it would appeal to me. I'll read you the back. Sometimes I think being a reader is kind of like being in a special club. Like we know that there's nothing better than curling up with a good book in front of the fire or on a sun lounger or under a tree. But sometimes I feel maybe we're the only people who know that reading is different to, and better than, all the crazy busy stuff we all get caught up with every day. So I've written a book for and about readers. Nina is a bookworm who dreams of running her own little bookshop. But real life is a bit trickier than the stories Nina loves, as she discovers when she moves to the beautiful wild highlands of Scotland to turn her dream into a reality. I'm not going to read you the end bit, it's really cutesy. Um, it's just her addressing the readers. This book, it's sort of, I sort of like the idea of it. So she gets sacked from her job in a Birmingham public library and she decides she's going to buy a bus and move, well, a book van and move to Scotland and sell books out of her van. And she's a bit kind of, um, she's meant to be about my age, about 28, 29, I think, uh, sort of shy, a bit mousy, not very outgoing, hasn't had a boyfriend in a long time, it's contemporary romance. Um, and she ends up kind of meeting a couple of men, she meets a man on a train at a level crossing who tries to run her over late at night by accident, which is really dumb, and he gives her a lift back to Birmingham and they start up this kind of thing, and he's Eastern European and everyone's saying, oh be a bit careful of him, you know? You don't know he's necessarily what you think he is, and then it turns out he's not, and he has a wife back in, I uh, can't remember what country he's meant to be from, somewhere in Eastern Europe. But I felt a bit, like, cheated by that. I'd quite like there to be a hero in a contemporary romance book who is Eastern European, and it doesn't turn out it has a wife. It feels a bit weird, actually. I felt a bit uncomfortable with it. Like, I know a lot of Eastern European people who haven't come over here and ended up, you know, sleeping with the random English woman while also having a wife at home and not understanding the problems with that. That seems dumb. That was my first problem with it. My second problem is she moves up to Scotland in her tiny book van that somehow she kits out perfectly with all of these books. She paints it up all twee and she finds herself a, um, converted barn. Beautifully converted barn for next to no money run by this grumpy, you guessed it, super attractive farmer who uh, whose wife has left him and she was really into interior design and ran off with the interior designer and it's just stupid. Like nobody falls into that and I appreciate that that is the point. I appreciate it's I was going to say chiclet. I appreciate it's contemporary romance. You know, that's what you sort of expect, but also it's just so far-fetched. So utterly far-fetched. No one does that. No one moves up to Scotland and it's this beautiful, perfect thing and they get to discover themselves and they find all of the attractive men and everything works out wonderfully and they get to sell books out of their van and it's all bloody stupid. And I'm really quite depressed with it. I read it because it's really short. I read it while I was waiting in the queue, two, two day queue to see Bruce Springsteen at Wembley with my dad. So it was the only book I had, which is probably why I got through it. Um, but Bruce was much, much better than this book. Obviously he was going to be. 
you know, it's worth a try if you like contemporary romance. Uh, some of the talk about Scotland is lovely, that's all quite nice, but the book itself is bloody stupid, I thought. And that comes from a place where I like Jenny Colgan, I like her a lot. She's done some funny books and she's done some quite interesting books and this one just wasn't for me, unfortunately. Next book I read, I've done a review of already, so I will link that down below and I won't talk about it now, I'll just say that that was Ruby by Cynthia Bond. Have a look at my video, it's a really fascinating book. Yeah, go have a look, see what I've said about it, tell me what you think, I'd be curious. That's all on that one. The last book I read, I got because I liked the cover. I said this in my uh, June book haul, I said I bought a book because I like the cover and then the cover wasn't the cover I thought it was. And that's this one, which is August is a Wicked Month by Edna O'Brien. And when I started this, I thought I'm not going to like this. Um, it said on the back, what put me off was um, a review by Gavin Ewart in the Evening Standard, which said, this is a terrific novel. It arouses sympathy and compassion like nobody's business. Miss O'Brien is an expert on girls and their feelings. No writer in English is so good at putting the reader inside the skin of a woman. And I thought, that sounds patronising and shit, I'm not going to enjoy this. And then I started reading it. And I thought, I'm still not going to enjoy this because it's following a main character who's, she's divorced from her husband, she's got a young son and her husband and her young son have gone off on holiday and she decides she's going to have a sort of sexually liberated adventure, starting with a man that she's met in London and then she goes to France. And that was kind of all I knew about it. And when it started, it was very much following that format and she wants that and it's all that sort of book and I thought I've read this and I've read this better, I've read Francois Sagan, people like that who uh, do interesting kind of fiction set in France looking at relationships and women's sexuality and I thought this is going to be stupid if that's what this is, she's not doing it as well. And then when the book really got in, it is quite short, it's only about 180 pages, but when it really got going I realised that it wasn't that at all, it was actually it was the exact opposite, it flipped it on its head uh, completely and so it was a woman who is, you know, she's attractive and she's interesting to an extent I suppose and she's kind of desirable but the situations she gets in are depressing and they're awkward and they're very human and she's very human. She has a lot of flaws as a character but you don't really mind that because she's so easy to connect to and you think I know this, I know. So for instance she's lying on a beach, um, she's just got to France, it's the first day, it's so hot. She's lying, she's gone to lie on a sun lounger on the beach and she's looking about and there's these attractive men and she's thinking this is going to be brilliant, this is going to be a wonderful holiday and then a woman walks past who's more attractive than she is and a man invites this woman to a party and she's watching all of this and it's not her, she's on the periphery and she's watching this woman get what she wanted and she starts to feel inadequate as a result and you sort of understand that feeling. Edna O'Brien sort of does understand the feelings of girls, funnily enough. I'm not going to tell you anymore because I'm going to ruin it for you but please buy a copy online, I think it's just being re-released as a Penguin Modern Classic, maybe this month, maybe next month. Uh, those beautiful grey penguin modern classic covers that I love so much so check it out if you get a chance it's really worth it and as I say it's super short so even if you don't enjoy it it's only 180 pages and I think it's really interesting and really feminist and worth a go. So yeah that is my wrap up for June thank you guys for watching if you like what you saw if you've read any of the books that I've covered uh, and you want to leave a comment about them or if you just want to leave a comment ask me a question whatever you want please do please subscribe to my channel and I'll hopefully see you all again soon mm -hmm.